Hello everyone and welcome back! Welcome to a new section of the Angular Security Masterclass. We are going to learn in this section about cross-site request forgery or CSRF, which is a very common security vulnerability. The key thing about this vulnerability is that the attack is very simple to perform. The attacker only needs your email. Or alternatively, the attacker only needs to convince you to click on a link, for example, on a message on a public forum. So the attacker does not need to have any level of control over your machine. We're going to see how to defend against this vulnerability. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to understand the vulnerability by performing ourselves the attack against this version of the application, which is currently vulnerable to this problem. Let's then go back to our application code and understand the vulnerability in detail. So what we are doing here is we are creating a JSON web token that contains the user session information and we are storing it in a cookie. The cookie is HTTP only and secure and those are great security properties. However, using cookies makes the application vulnerable to CSRF which is a particular type of vulnerability that assumes that you are currently logged into the application. So we have just logged in and we have a new session. Now you probably want to increase the size of the session during this test. In order to do so, let's go here to the session duration attribute in security utils and let's increase the size of the session. We're going to hit control S so that we reload the server. This way we will be able to test the vulnerability. Now, if we reload the application, because the restart of the server has wiped the users that are in memory, we are going to go here and we are going to create a new user. So let's hit sign up, we have a new user and we have a new session that is a bit more long lived than the sessions that we were using before. So we are currently logged into our application that is running in localhost port 4200. Okay, so now somebody sent you an email and you can see an example of such type of email here on the CSRF folder. Let's open email.txt. So somebody sends you an email that essentially convinces you to click a link. Now this link is an attack link. The way that this works is you are logged into your application. So you have a valid session cookie that the browser is going to send each time that your browser does a request to your application server. Now, this link is not towards the application server. This is a link that will lead you to an attack server under the attacker control. We are going to run this attack server in a moment. Right now, let's have a look at the CSRF attack page that this link is sending us to. So when the user clicks this link, this page is going to be loaded from the domain of the attacker. So this is a completely separate domain. It might even be a link to an IP address directly. It doesn't have to be to a domain. So this is the attack page. Typically nothing gets printed to the screen. This is just to demonstrate that the attack was successful. We have here a visual message on the screen and we have here a form. Now this form here is a plain HTML form with a post method. So we are triggering here something in our server. We are now doing a post call to the application. So this is how the attacker is going to attack the application. It's going to lure you to click into a page under his control and he's going to auto submit a form that does a post call to your application server. Now, because your browser has a cookie active with a session and you are currently logged into the application, this post call is going to be seen from the point of view of the application. It's going to be seen as a valid request that you made from your browser. That is because the request will contain your session cookie. The server is going to receive the session cookie, it's going to validate it and the server is going to process this request like if you had clicked here log out. There is no way for the server to distinguish a request that came from your browser interaction and the request made by this attack page. This vulnerability is inherent to the way that cookies work. Cookies will always be added to any request that you send to the server, independently of where the request was made. In your application, in a third party page, the cookie will always be added by the browser. 
This attack, however, has several limitations, but before going through them, let's first demonstrate the attack. We are going to log out the user. In order to perform this attack, the first thing that we are going to do is to start the attack server, onto which we are directing the user to load the attack page. So in order to do that, we have created here an npm task that will allow us to start a very simple server. We are using here the http-server module, which allows us to start a server for development purposes. We are specifying that we are disabling the server cache and we are serving files from the current directory where the package.json is. So let's start the server then. We are going to open a third terminal and on the same directory as the package.json, we are going to run npm run csrf server. Now this utility has started here an attack server on port 8080. Make sure to confirm the port here in the console because this utility server will take for example port 8081 if you have already something running on port 8080. This is important because the link on the email is using this port. So now we have an attack server running. So let's say that you are on your Gmail and you have clicked the link. The link is going to open your default browser. Let's say that it was the same browser as you were logged in. In order to view better how the attack works, let's switch to a larger window where we are going to be opening here our Chrome DevTools here in the Network tab. We are going to reload the server before trying the attack just to confirm that indeed we still have a session active. So now we have clicked the link. So this would have opened a new browser window and the link would be pasted here and the page would be loaded. So let's see what happens here in the network tab. We're going to switch to it, clear everything, and we're going to hit preserve log so that we can see everything that is going on. Let's paste the attack link here and see what happens. If we hit enter, we can see here that the attack took place, the attack page was loaded, but now let's see what happened here. Let's remove the XHR filter that is filtering only Ajax requests and see what happened. This option preserve log is going to keep all the logging information even if we switch to a new page. So this is great for troubleshooting redirects or any scenarios that span multiple pages. As we can see here, we have loaded the first page and two seconds later, we have here an HTTP post call that was made to a completely different domain. So here we are running everything on localhost, but on a real attack scenario, here we would have the domain of the attacker or the IP address of the server of the attacker. And here we would have your domain. Now let's have a look at the post request. This post request was made via the attack page, but it's still included here, your session cookie. That's because you are sending a request to the domain of your application, so your session cookie would have been included. This means that you must have been logged out via the attack page because there was no way for the application server to know if this was a valid request. There was nothing about the request that would allow the backend to identify it as being invalid. It did contain the session cookie after all. So if we now switch back to the application and we reload the application, we are going to see that you have been logged out. So this shows that it's possible for an attacker which has not compromised your browser and has not compromised your server. If they trick you into clicking a link on a mail, they will be able to simulate a request on your behalf that the server will not be able to identify as an invalid request. Okay, so at this point, we now understand how the attack works and how it's being performed exactly. Now that we know that, let's discuss what are the limitations of this attack, what can the attacker actually do in practice with this attack, and most of all, how can we defend our application against CSRF?